Everything's been good on my end. Um, I mean, prediction's a strong word. I mean, I just look at the charts and follow the TA, and TA is basically, uh, you know, rhymes with the past. So that's that's kind of what that is. But most cycles have a mid-cycle dip. I just thought it was going to be before the new year, and I was wrong. So, you know, got to call it when you're wrong and call it when you're right, too. Yeah, 100%. And, you know, look, there's something I, I do want to talk about uh, first. And, and again, for anyone who's brand new to this space, by the way, this generally kind of goes, we'll just talk about things and give you something that's on people's minds. Because if it's on my mind, it's probably on your mind and it's probably worthwhile uh, just kind of having a general view. But, I mean, we're on countdown right now. We are less than 14 days away from the Bitcoin halving. Now, it's interesting. We're starting to see loads of ramping up on Twitter, loads of people talking about the halving, loads of people are talking about it, have no clue what is about to happen? It is going to be the biggest non-event you've ever seen ever. Simply eight block eight three nine 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 rewards six point two five Bitcoin. Block eight four zero 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 rewards three point one two five. Nothing else going to happen, but certainly the interest is going to come after the Bitcoin halving. So let me come to you first, Wadi, and just get your view on the Bitcoin halving. Where are you at? What's your mindset at? What's the charts telling you? What are you hearing? Give us your view on the halving, less than two weeks away. It's coming, it's going to be here no time at all. Give us your view. Yeah, so to be honest with you, to be, um, like, I'm waiting for a bigger dip. I know some people are saying, oh, you know, the dip is over. I honestly think a bigger one might be on its way. I could be wrong because obviously... It's different this time due to the fact that BlackRock and all these other institutions, you know, they they have the ETFs out. So right now it's kind of unpredictable, but I do expect a buy the rumor, sell the news event where the Bitcoin having happens and instead of starting to blast off like people are expecting and start dipping way lower, probably around 40K or so. And hey man, if it does happen, that's a gift to everyone. So everyone could just buy and then from there, you know, way, uh, I don't know, probably go sideways for a few months and then from there the long awaited bull market that we are so expecting that's really what i what i believe personally yeah i think you're, somebody's been doing their ta uh sorry for interrupting i was gonna say somebody's been doing their ta good job thank you thank you yeah, I think, uh, I, I, and this is what I was saying about, about Twitter at the minute, it, it, or, or X as, as the platform's called. So many people are hyping this narrative up of, you know, get ready, it's going to be an absolute blast off event. I, I absolutely sit with you two in terms of history tells us that generally speaking, we see a buy the rumor sell the news event, but we do eventually head on up to, to all time highs in the back of it. So, uh, look, Michael, I'll come to you. You know, what are you doing? What are you preparing for? Where's your mindset? You know, you're stacking some bags. Give us kind of your strategy that's going to go into the halving and then come out the other side. Well, in general, um, when I saw the bottom come in, I bought a lot. And I've been buying on the way up. I stopped really buying um, major blue chips probably when BTC hit about 40K because I honestly thought it was going to pull back a little bit from 40 to 50, maybe hit a hit a small dump. But I've been steadily just buying the dips on all these other tokens. Everything everybody talks about, when it takes a dump, I buy it. I don't care if it's going to dump further because I'm going to buy that too. I'm not throwing everything in on every dump, but you know I'm DCAing in all the way down on all these tokens that everyone's talking about. And, you know, if it goes up and then, then has another pullback, I'm going to DCA in all the way down there, too. And if I get too much into it at this point of the cycle, it will run my entire life. And I have certain things going on. Um, Two-Bit knows a little, about, a little bit about it. 
um, so a specific token just dropped their pro provisional white paper today. And, you know, I'm kind of busy, but I'm buying the dip and everybody should be buying the dips as well. Pick your tokens, write them down, watch them every day. When there's a dip, throw a little bit on it. That's about all I got to say about that. Look, I think you're, uh, I think you're bang on the money. And, and interesting, I was just kind of looking at where we, uh, where we kind of sit on previous uh, previous halvings, and I, and I think it's always worthwhile just understanding, be best prepared. How do you get into the mindset of, like you said, when we see the, the kind of push down? I'll, I'll post it in the Jumbotron in just a minute, but yeah, buying the dip, and I talk about this quite a lot, whether it's in this space, whether it's on my live stream, but DCAing genuinely is such a superpower that people don't use. People just seem to have this mentality of, okay, I'm going to dump everything I have into this. And we talked a little bit about this a while back on one of our spaces where we talked about the emotion of getting involved. And crypto heightens every emotion that you can do if you've been investing for a while, whether you do Forex or whether you're into derivatives, whatever it is, it heightens the emotion. So you end up getting into something. You dump your entire bag. You then get pissed off that the bag's dropped. People then exit with the entire portfolio. You know, DCA is such an important part of investing in volatile assets that you absolutely can just just make that price difference a huge thing. I, I, you know, go back to AVAX and I truly believe AVAX will be a great project in this uh, upcoming bull run. And I think originally I bought in at something like $46. I thought it was on the way up. I bought a little bit, but again, it was 25% of what I initially wanted to put into it. And as it came down, I bought again at 42. I bought again at 38. I think it dropped as low as 35. Bang. I'm just doing exactly the same with dupe. I probably paid 162 on dupe, probably a little bit expensive. Okay, well, I've got an opportunity to buy at 136. Of course, I'm going to buy a bag. And if it drops a little bit further, I'll buy, you know, because actually the position I want to get to, and it's important that you have a theory or you have a, a number in mind that you want to get to. A lot of people talk about round numbers. Well, how do you get to that point? You can DCA your way to that. You keep a little paper on the side. I think it's really, really important. Cooch, what's your view? You know, you do things a little bit different. You're much more intrinsic into certain ecosystems, particularly the Solana Network Flare. What's your view around halving? What are you doing? What are you preparing for? What have you kind of got coming up? Well, here's the deal with me, right? Since I've been in crypto about about six years. So now, now I began to actually enjoy and have fun, you know, in the space, right? You know, I, I've been kind of pretty much all, all the top blue chip tokens, you know, like your... Uh, your Bitcoin, your Ethereum, your Polygon, Matic, your Avalanche, yeah, you know, your tokens, you know, your top 20 tokens, most of us already have them, right? So now I got into the point to where I kind of want to venture out and have a little fun in the space. So that's where the memes came in, right? So we got into Dogecoin, then we got into SHIB, then we got into Pepe, then we got into Bunk, and now we have these meme coins that's that's coming on these other blockchains, right? Like meme coins coming on base, meme coins coming on Polygon, meme coin uh meme coins coming on Flare. So I've been kind of venturing out into these meme coins that's coming in onto these other mainnets. So that's where my focus been, right? So when Kudo came out on Polygon, I was you know, I kind of ventured over to Polygon. Well, I had already been at Polygon hold a substantial bag in Polygon, so they airdropped me just a, a, you know, a small bag of Kulo, and that's how I got introduced to Kulo. So everybody that followed me, right, that was, uh, that I knew, I pretty much told them, hey man, Kulo gonna be something big, because we got in Kulo before it was one million market cap. Kulo ran all the way up to almost a 50 million market cap, when they got to 25 million market cap, they burned a half a million tokens. So right then, I knew that, uh, hey, this could be something. So everybody that got in Kulo initially made money. Now Kulo sitting at around, what, 11 million market cap? And Kulo is still early. They only been, you know, trading live since January, to the end of January, for about two months. So, yeah, my thing right now is uh, catching these memes that's on these other blockchains like Polygon and like that. So the only thing I bought this week was uh, Fox. I bought Fox on Flare. So I'm expecting something big out of Flare. 
meme coin. So, yeah, I'm doing something a little different, trying to have a little fun this time around. But for this be having, I have, I have no clue what's going to happen with the heaven, and I'm hoping this time is different. I'm hoping history doesn't repeat itself, and we continue to go straight up, but I'm hoping we don't see these big dips, and I'm hoping we don't drive a lot of people away from crypto. But yeah, I'm hoping history doesn't repeat itself, and you know, things go different this time around. Yeah, I mean, if history is anything to go by, it's certainly going to be different. I mean, it is different this time, isn't it? A lot of people say, you know, we've got an ETF inflows. And we talked a little bit about this uh, on the live stream. You know, when Grayscale finally just exit their positions and move on, then who knows where the market's going to go. Um, I think it's kind of interesting. But yeah, I mean, look, the point there is, you know, you've got to plan. You understand what you're doing. And, and equally, you're standing, sticking to your strategies. You go into these kind of halvings. And, and look, they're a once every four year event. I mean, it's kind of crazy, dude. You know, they potentially will, will pick up a little bit of space, obviously, because it's down to the number of blocks that are mined. But the reality is, generally speaking, we've seen, you know, July 2016, May 2020, and then obviously, hopefully, in and around the kind of 19th of April 2024. So, yeah, it's going to be an event. It's going to be a proper non-event, though. A lot of people will absolutely be expecting this huge god candle, and it just simply won't happen. Nothing will happen. We talked a little bit about miners. There's been some big, big mining companies ordering huge amounts of hardware and I, when i say huge amounts of hardware they really are we were talking about archon who have ordered 27 and a half thousand bitcoin miners really setting what that looks like in terms of that we see myra there uh, myra they're absolutely stacking in terms of hardware so we're seeing some significant leverage being spent in terms of getting equipment ready bear in mind those rewards all of a sudden 3.15 down from 6.25 going to be pretty interesting miners already going to be down on their money. So it's certainly going to be an interesting view for sure. I guess you touched a little bit um, just on the kind of meme narrative. And certainly we've been seeing a really volatile asset. You know, we've seen things like bone break, ability to mark up in two days. That's obviously come down. Quite a lot of kind of pulled back down. What do you think happens with memes? And I guess what I'd probably throw out there to anyone that's down there in the, in the space, drop in the comment section. Click on the little purple, purple box. Give us your best Bitcoin halving meme name i'm interested to know what uh, that would be but why did let me come to you you know what do you think happens to the meme narrative what do you think happens when we move into the halving do you think anything changes do you think these pump what's your view um so basically with that having um if bitcoin obviously goes down then everything is going to go down so the way I see it is this way, because some, I guess some people don't understand it, but Bitcoin goes down, our coins goes down probably times 10, but then the mean coin goes down times 30 or times 50. I don't know if I'm the only one that has noticed that, but Bitcoin coming up, then that's a different story which obviously everything is going to pump. Now, me personally, like I said, I noticed like everyone was overhyping Pepe uh, Blanc. Dude, one of my friends, I told him, it's not, it's not ready, don't do it. He bought Blanc like around 30 something. And Pepe, when it killed one zero, right? Now he is losing big time. But I did tell him, don't do it because it's going to go back down. So my thing is that I just, I mean, sometimes people don't understand my TA, but I understand the chart my own way and I have a timing to when I get in the market and when I don't. So, yeah. Yeah, I think it's going to be a really interesting uh, narrative. And, and yeah, big shout out to a couple of the projects jumping in. And I'm just going to bring uh, uh, up. I've got one of the best names in cryptocurrency. So, yeah, anyone can come up, by the way. Give us your view. It's a really chilled space. We'd love to hear from your project. We'd love to hear from kind of you guys, what you're talking about, what's all going on. Um, and, and just give you a view on things. So uh, I think it's Mike, isn't it? Um, welcome, buddy. How's things? 
Can't talk to you, Michael. Yeah. Hey, what's up, Wadi? Hey, what's up, guys? Yeah, uh, interesting conversation. I was, uh, you know, listening on the markets that I popped by, following you guys around. Um, a few things. I was listening to them talk about Kulo going to uh, about $50 million, something like that, and then they burned a bunch of tokens. Um, and I think nothing against Kulo or anything like that or any project that does this, but, you know, I'm, I'm a big math person. It's something that uh, people should be aware of, that when a project burns a lot of tokens, you also got to know where those tokens came from. If they were just pre-allocated at launch, or if maybe they were collected with taxes via swap liquefy, you know, and then they just accumulated the tokens. I mean, what are you going to do with them? You can't sell them on the market. Additional to the other swap liquefy that's been happening, because that's just going to bring the chart down. So the best thing, only logical thing to do is to burn them. But you're really not burning money because you can't spend it anyway, in my opinion. Um, but yeah, I mean, the markets, you know, Bitcoin moving and, you know, up and down and how it affects the alts and then how it affects the memes. And that's how it's always been, you know, Bitcoin goes up a little bit, alts go up, you know, a little bit, but it's when Bitcoin pauses for a little while at a certain point that you see alts and meme coins explode in price, but Bitcoin drops, um, alts and memes lose their shit and they go down fairly quickly, you know, um, I'm not as much of a TA person like Wadi and other people. I'm more of a fundamental person from that I just look at what the markets are doing and just kind of follow that with uh, Bitcoin um, being the dominant player and it kind of it controls a lot more than what people think and you know uh, people you know, like you said earlier and people don't understand how powerful it is a DCA and not put all your eggs in one basket and not over invest in anything and always keep some dry powder because you know <laughs> if anyone can read you know, the future a few minutes in advance, then, you know, everyone would be filthy rich, right? I mean, you, you can't tell when things are going to happen, so you got a DCA just in case you're wrong, and a lot of people are wrong on their assessments of what's going to happen, you know, this is how it goes. But anyway, that's my opinion on that. So, um, how's everyone doing today? Friday, you know, usually it's a chill day for most markets things cool off until the weekend, but, uh, yeah. <laughs> feel like we might see um, some more green next week, but I don't know about everything now with Solana losing its shit and going down. Again, today. again, I mean, you know, just when you think that Solana have got their shit together, they decide to not work. I mean, it's almost ridiculous, isn't it? Which opens up the doorway to something like base. I'm sure we're going to see uh, something pretty kind of crazy on there. But yeah, the point around DCAing is it's such a big thing. And don't forget, there's going to be loads of new people that are going to come to the space. Loads of people to come in with these dreams. And I think for anyone in this space, everyone gets in with that mentality of, okay, here's my thousand dollars. And I've heard crypto has been turned into a millionaire. And here I go. And I put a thousand in and all of a sudden, okay, that thousand is now worth 800. It's fine. It's going to come back. Okay. It's worth 600. It's all worth two. You know, everyone does that. DCA is such an important tool. How you invest. We talked a lot about the emotion of a bull market and you know if you've never been and witnessed one i much prefer bear markets a lot of people go what the hell are you talking about to that's absolutely mental but they're much easier to predict they're much easier in the bottom of a bear market just buy coins you're generally going to do all right bull markets when do i take profit what should i move out of this portfolio should i be getting into it that FOMO have i sold for this amount of money but it's going to the moon and i should have got back into it and people buy back into projects all sorts of craziness that's going on. So it's going to be a wild ride, but one I'm up for it. But uh, look, tell us a little bit about Earn. You guys sitting at what, $3.74 million market cap? Uh, heading on up to what, 1,000 holders? So just give us a little bit of an update on what you guys are doing. Yeah, yeah, we're sitting um, just under under 4 mil. Um, you know, that's one thing I tell my entire community and then other, you know, cool projects that are out there that are also um, hosting space. It's always good to collab with people too. But yeah, we're doing okay. Um, People need to learn the DCA, um, which is ideal into like everything, even even earn. But yeah, earn is a um, multi-chain um, uh, immutable contract, as in we renounce ownership. And so basically, what that means is that we can't change anything. And it's a it's a two 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 tax. <laughs> like kiss my kid outside in the swing set. It's a two 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 tax. Um, and basically, what that means is that you get basically reflections on buy, sells, and transfers. And so um, it's actually, we say it's 100% community driven because it really it is. Um, it's really based off of, you know, everyone, what they want to make out of it. And so we're um, having fun with like collaborating with other projects and 
maybe even doing liquidity um, servicing where they can use earn as their liquidity instead of using like BNB or like AVAX as their liquidity. So that's really, that's something like I think a lot of people should be doing with their projects. I mean, like you don't have to launch your token using BNB. You can launch your token with somebody else's token and then, or partial or something like that anyway. And so we're looking at doing stuff like that, which is super cool for projects. And yeah, I mean, we uh, had a 5k launch. We kissed 11 and a half million. And yeah, I know we're sitting just below four, but, um, you know, I can't, I'm not going to predict and say it's where it's going to go by a certain date. All I can say is the CCA and enjoy uh, the little the retracement in the entire markets if you guys actually kept dry powder, you know. So, but yeah, doing well. Perfect. Uh, appreciate that. And uh, yeah, look, I think I've always been in a world where those projects that have been a while, have been around a while, those projects that work hard, those projects that aren't afraid to come on and be really open and transparent in terms of what they're doing. And I see Matt Moyer, shout out to you, brother, for coming in from the Advantage AI team at LK. So shout out to you guys. If you're in and you work hard and you've been here through the bear market, you know, that tells and stands testament to what you're about and what your project's about. And I know you guys come in regular spaces, so, you know, shout out to you guys and highly recommend anyone uh, checking out. And I heard from about you guys when you were talking about spot liquefiers when I was kind of first getting into what do contracts look like? How do you start to read them and understand, okay, how is this mechanic all of a sudden dumped a prize when I can't see a sell on it and behind the scenes you've got contracts doing all sorts of crazy growth which then links perfectly into Advantage AI which they have that you know their AI, AI pro where you can go and check all that stuff so yeah shout out to you um, I appreciate it and uh, like magic like you see we've got Matt Morty here coming up you see he fell for it hook line and sinker it's like fishing in a barrel uh, <laughs> hopefully he's just going to connect now good good to see you Matt welcome to the space brother I appreciate you how's things You shouldn't be able to speak now. Do you got rug? Matt? I don't, I don't hear him. We'll come back. We'll come back. You definitely, he's off mute, but, um, but yeah, hopefully we can get Matt on here and he can give us a bit of a view of what's going on with uh, Advantage. I know those guys have been working super, super hard and they've got, a, uh, the AI pros just come out. Well, in, in, in the meantime, it does come up, bro. I'm telling you, I'm fascinated. I've been testing it out with uh, the Solana place and definitely on point. I like it. Yeah, I'd be interested to hear how those guys are doing, and, and certainly interested to see what uh, what that's kind of all about. So yeah, that'd be uh, that'd be cool if Matt can get back in here and, and give us a view. So um, look, let me kind of jump across and uh, and get your kind of view on a, on a couple of things, Michael. What are you kind of looking at at the moment? I know you don't generally dabble in. Well, you do dabble in the meme coin narrative. You dabble in the absolute degenerate world of meme coins. But what are you looking at at the minute? What's on the shopping list? And then hopefully uh, we can come back to Matt. Yeah, so um, I mean, I do dabble in memes. I mean, I, you know, I spend a lot of time in the space, and I like uh, collaborative projects too. It's always really cool because people, you know, that are out here down and dirty are the ones that come up with really cool ideas. It's not always the top dogs like, you know, Ashes buying Solana, Bitcoin, or Ethereum. Though I do have a decent bag of AVAX and and Tezos, and I who I have high hopes for those. See how they play out this bull run. But uh, yeah, I mean, I talk to other people in the space, and you know, you can get a you can get the vibe from someone when you talk to them that they're kind of BS or not. After a while, and they, they kind of show that test of time. And so, I've been getting out with a few projects that are out there. Um, I sit in a few Buddha spaces. Um, they host; they're, they're pretty cool guys. Um, I think you know we could see if they keep at it, consistent, they could do well. Um, there's another guy I think in the space. They have a project called J5. Um, that's a BNB project. Um, that's actually pretty low cap. Um, there's another one. Oh yeah, Paul Chain. I mean, you always see them in a bunch of spaces, and they're doing a lot of collaboration, just connecting, you know, projects together with them um, out there in the space. And there's some others that are more up there. I mean, this is the AI space. Um, I'm talking about like uh, Hash AI that started at 30 million, that is currently sitting like 260. If you guys follow it's Alex Becker at all, he really says that AI is. Um, kind of in price discovery right now. So any project that has an AI narrative or is able to tie somehow their token to AI by utilizing the token for like um, paying for mining, hashing power, which a little bit of alpha, Earn might be doing something like that in the future, um, could be do fairly well. So check out AI projects, gaming projects, because um, I think there's some money there 
you know, it's going to be big this bull run. Um, like no day, I think it's also like 250 mil. I mean, I think these are going to, if they keep their, play their cards right and they actually build out what they say they're going to build, I mean, time will tell. You could see these also in the billions this cycle, in my opinion. Yeah, I couldn't agree more. And, and yeah, it's interesting, as you said about Hash AI, and I know Tim is in the space, I got one, got into that pretty early. But yeah, I mean, that thing's doing nearly 8 million in volume and it's still really pushing. And there's a couple of really, really exciting projects that have come out more recently. And, you know, AI narrative, gaming narrative, all going to be big players in the space this year. I truly believe for this bull run, we're going to see some pretty insane market caps aligned. Obviously, you know, the meme narrative, but the meme narrative will die out and then we'll start to really see some of these kick on. And, you know, there's some really good projects that have been building really, really good stuff. And, you know, it's interesting you bring up the mining side of things. And I, I see that more and more now, uh, you know, GPU mining for rent and lots more tokens that are attributed to, uh, mining power and, and kind of using that narrative. And I think that's going to be a pretty big deal as well. It kind of goes back 2017 when I first got in, cloud mining was the rage. Everyone was buying cloud mining contracts and trying to mine Bitcoin through that. And, you know, I certainly think that there's a narrative, probably a better narrative than what was in there. Ultimately, that was you put your Bitcoin in, you buy a mining contract for 12 months. If at any point it became uh, in negative, the contract was void. I mean, they were the biggest scams going around. Genesis Mining, Hashing24, there was loads of terrible ones. Um, but yeah, interesting. And, and look, uh, I think it's definitely an interesting narrative, both AI and gaming, for sure. You know what I think it is? I think it's due to the regulation that's happening right now with like the on-ramp and off-ramps. People are trying to get money in, and that's why mining is making a comeback, because mining allows you to acquire cryptocurrency without KYC. And so people love the idea of buying a cryptocurrency that you can then be part of a project that also pays you dividends or uh, mining rewards. Though, <laughs> to be real, um, I'm sure the SEC is going to love that later down the line. People that are actually utilizing crypto to pay people out, um, you know, coins that they're mining. We'll see how that plays out in the next year or two. But uh, yeah, I mean, that's what it is right now. I bet a lot of these projects, if you read through them they have these little blurbs that say that token holders will receive mining rewards and that's a that is a very attractive thing for individuals to either you know per, actually directly purchase rigs mining rigs or pay for hashing power which gives them tokens utilizing a cryptocurrency and that's a big thing of like node ai and hash ai if you guys dive into it and i think it's going to be pretty big and i think it's a, a really related to all this, these regulatory enforcement actions that are happening. You, you already what happened with uh, KuCoin, and a lot of other exchanges are going kaput, you know, with uh, requiring either KYC or basically closing up shop, and people want to get their money in, and, you know, mining is a big way to do it if you uh, look into it that way. Yeah, for sure, and look, we... Uh... We obviously have our community pool as part of our uh, part of my YouTube channel. We actually mine uh, crypto as well. We've been mining Casper for a while. We've now just flipped flipped over to another uh, another mining protocol on the heavy hash. So yeah, look, I, I think absolutely it's going to be a uh, going to be a big deal and, and a seamless transition. And get this, why are you going to love this? By the way, so all these projects coming out, they're offering these mining rewards. It's all about hashing power. What better way to verify their contracts, their smart contracts, by using an AI powered contract checker and who could we go to to give us a bit of a view on that mr matt Mortier, welcome to the space brother house things hopefully you can hear us can we hear you? <laughs> wow what, what an introduction man this is insane how's it going guys <laughs> fantastic we appreciate you being here my man how's things how does Avantis AI give us a little bit of a rundown oh man um yeah it's it's been great you know first off before i get to that i just want to say something about your streams because you know i was just there right uh, but your energy is absolutely incredible, man. You know, I was happy I made it towards the end of your stream you just had. Uh, but we'll definitely check out the full thing later on. Anyhow, something that caught my attention on your stream is when you were looking at those numbers and subscribers from different YouTubers, right? And I just couldn't understand why you should not have at least a few hundred thousand subscribers yet. Because yeah. honestly, man, your content is fucking incredible. Sorry Thank for the cussing right there. I appreciate that. <laughs> appreciate it. No, but and by the way, the same goes for Waddy. What's going on, Waddy? I don't think Waddy's here, is he? <laughs> no, so yeah, I am. I'm sorry, man. Dealing with my daughter is going at it. Hey, enough. I'm sorry, guys. He's on the wheelchair, Waddy. Just calm it down. <laughs> <laughs> Anyhow, um, yeah, so yeah, Advantasy I am, man, look, there's been some great days, honestly, because we've just released a new version, but I'll touch that uh, a little bit later. I know you already met Chris and LK ready from uh, from the team, and you know, what makes this company and token so incredibly powerful is, you know, we've got real hardworking, genuine people backing up this project, 
uh, with an you know, incredible amount of skills. And especially when we're together, we know we can build and create anything. And this is how our artificial intelligence powered smart contract scanner uh, and token was born. You know, we've been here since 2021, built through the bear market, which, you know, I believe is the second longest bear market, which is just crazy to me. It's great for investors, but a hard time for projects, let me tell you that. Um, however, we're happy to, you know, have continued building. And what we're building is not your typical scanner. You know, you can uh, check it out on outlook.advantage.ai. But this is not to bash on, you know, any other security related projects out there, because I am a strong believer of having a multitude of research platforms to identify flaws. However, you know, we foresaw the need for something to fight at the highest level possible against the shady developers you know, that are rug pulling and scamming people like every day in DeFi, specifically on chains like Solana and BSC. Um, and we, you know, try to offer a new way to get, you know, the most unbiased and accurate results possible instead of just, you know, looking at the raw data like lock liquidity and, and you know, contract functions. We also have uh, our AI to adapt to behavioral patterns and, you know, look further than just pure code. And the best part is, you know, with every search that a user performs, you know, using our AI, the smarter it just becomes. So it's almost like a living thing, which is just <laughs> absolutely crazy to me. But that's what Advantage AI is in a nutshell. You know, it's a platform that you can use to uh, empower yourself as an investor instead of relying on pure feeling and lack of knowledge when reading contracts. It's basically like having an expert technical sidekick by your side. Yeah, and, and in fairness, you guys have been just working super hard, and and again, you put out regular content, and and equally, you know, the team is incredibly dedicated to what you do. So, you know, that's why I was talking about previously. The project's been here for a while; they've been working hard. They are they aren't just, you know, here for a good time. Then, you know, they're definitely for me someone worthwhile looking at. So, most recently, you know, the Solana ecosystem when it works is been full of pump and dumps i mean it's the easiest thing in the world i think when i looked into it you can launch people were talk, launching tokens with half a soul i mean it's kind of insane but uh look give us a little bit of a view in terms of what what's that about what do people get with the solana side of things and uh obviously one of my children decided just to wake up a minute but uh yeah give us a view on that kind of thing what, what do we get with that and, and i guess look ultimately how successful you're being you give us a couple of uh, examples that'd be great yeah, yeah, for sure. So we just had an update on Advantage CI and added the Solana blockchain to the list of chains that you uh, now can you know scan smart contracts on. We have uh, BSC, Ethereum, and Arbitrum, and now also Solana. And look, I've I've been talking to the developer team you know every single day to uh, see what the progress was going to be, and it's just absolutely insane to see how ridiculously amount of uh, how many contracts are just bad on Solana and how easy it is to rug pull there. Um, you know, there's a lot of new stream and influx of new contracts coming in on Solana every single day because, you know, let's face it, it's meme coin season. And specifically on Solana, you see a lot of those popping up left, right and center. And, you know, this is something we have been catching. And currently we send, sit at like, let's say a 95% accuracy rate, catching all of those bad contracts by, you know, looking at the behavior, looking at the contract, the code and everything that goes with it. And um, it's just been absolutely insane to see how many contracts we actually find on uh, on Solana right now. This is also the reason why we are happy that Solana actually was added uh, to the lineup of chains because we had a campaign going, which was Chain Wars. We had, you know, eight different chains combating against each other. You know, all these users that would vote on their favorite chain of Solana one, and I'm happy it did because uh, it's been, you know, going absolutely crazy on that side. Yeah, and I think some of the, some of the narratives were 2,000 coins were being launched every single day on Solana, which... You know, you've got people that truly come into this space and they may bring, like, let's face it, let's just talk reality here. They bring their pension, their 401ks, whatever they do, they bring kind of crazy things to the space. And, you know, that's kind of what we try and do and educate people where they are. And ultimately, they just try and find the next big thing. But ultimately, they find is the coin that's been the next big thing. It's the thing that everyone thought was going to be the next big thing and now isn't. And generally speaking, is either full of bad people or is on its way out. And I think that's where you know, some great projects come in and certainly where you guys come in is to kind of just support that decision making. Obviously, you know, never trust anything 100%. What you should be doing is verifying a decision or a mindset or an emotion that you have when it comes to, should I invest? And the great thing about cryptocurrencies is you are the custodian of your own financial future, but at the same time comes risk. You know, there's no going back. There's no refunds in this space, unfortunately. So, you know, surround yourself with great people, great tools, and ultimately make yourself have the best possible chance to maximize your potential in this space. And generally speaking, you'll do pretty well. So uh, yeah, shout out to you guys. And, and right now, uh, if I'm brand new to the space, I've just heard you for the first time. How do I go about getting advanced AI Pro? What do I have to do? And ultimately, where and when can I get it? 
Well, the good thing is we actually have an event going up right now. Uh, as a matter of fact, we uh, you know have the free version and the pro version, and you know the difference is it's actually pretty much you know the security side is the same, but the information you get is different, right? So because the free version has exactly the same results, but pro offers you a more comprehensive list of information, so you can also understand the reason for the outcome of the search, you know, and which flaws we actually find inside a smart contract. Uh, but pro is now actually free, so anyone that's you know will, you know wanting to actually access advantage out. Outlook Pro, all you have to do is just go to outlook.advantage.ai. At the top right, there's a button that says connect wallet. Um, you can connect any wallet and you'll get Pro actually for free. And that's how it works. Um, it's super easy. There's a QR code that you can scan. You can either use MetaMask or anything. Uh, and, you know, take a look at our uh, link tree uh, in the bio as well. Um, there's a lot of other things that we are working on, like, for example, the Discord bot we have run, uh, up and running, but we are also building a Telegram bot, which is also going to be AI powered. And um, it's looking good. We just had the beta tested and the results are absolutely phenomenal. It's going to be different than the typical, you know, Telegram scanner as well. We were actually trying to innovate on that department, you know, make it a little bit different. And uh, but yeah, that's pro and uh, that's our products in, uh, in a nutshell. Perfect. I appreciate you. And I just, I just quickly jumped over, jumped onto Advantage AI Pro, took a quick screenshot of some horrible token that I'm absolutely not telling anyone to go buy on the Solana ecosystem. Just FYI, it's called Bunny, and it looks absolute garbage. So please don't go buy it. But I guess what you've got there is just an example of what it tells you, what it looks like. It gives you a really easy color coded system. Green is good. Red is bad. If you stick to those principles in cryptocurrency, you're probably going to be all right. Uh, Wadi, I know you've been kind of playing around with it. I don't know if you want to maybe jump in and give your view as, a, as an investor into this space and, you know, somebody who's kind of grown up around this. I don't know if you want to just jump in and give your view. Um, sorry about that. What, um, what are you to be? Sorry. Advantage AI Pro. Just give us a view on, on, on your, because you've been using it, haven't you, so... Oh no, no, on a Ventus AI bro, look, I kept on literally harassing Matt when he told me about it. It was like a crackhead needing that drug. I kept on sending him emojis, I need it, I need it. And then when we were getting ready to test it out, for some reason I was having issues and I kept sending him the joker gift saying okay i'm getting ready to i'm um, to lose my shit but bro everything worked out i'm literally loving it um and it's just great like i've been playing with so many rugs literally like usually i use my own contract scanners and all of that in tg but some of the things I notice it doesn't detect everything, but then I started trying out Adventures AI, and it's giving me more details about it. So I'm like, "Yo, this thing is on point, and it's something that we all need in this space, especially if you're new to the DeFi space." And guys, I'm not getting paid to say this. I'm not overhyping it. I literally believe that this project is needed in this space. So that's all I'm going to say, bro. Awesome. Big words. And we appreciate you. And like I said, Matt, appreciate you coming up on the space as well. And if anyone wants to check it out, just follow Matt, follow Advantage AI, and you can go and uh, have a look at that. And you're always welcome in here. As is anyone else who wants to come up, give a view, have a view on your project, talk about the markets, whatever. This is one of those spaces that if you've never talked in a space, you've never voiced an opinion, this is the space to do it. It's relaxed. It's cool. There's definitely, if you've got a question about the market, there's some brilliant minds in this space. Always are welcome uh, and ultimately always want to kind of do well. And we talk about the emotions of it. We talk about experience that we've had. You know, this bull run is all about trying to make people have uh, both the enjoyable journey through cryptocurrency but at the same time making some money. So anyone is welcome to come up. Anyone is welcome uh, to give a view. And again, Matt, thank you so much, Mike from Earn. Appreciate you guys. Uh, coming up as well so we talked a little bit about the halving we talked about two great projects by the way definitely go and check those out for sure and have a look so i guess what's on everyone's mind what's coming up we had some pretty big news with xrp and that stablecoin narrative there feels like there is some movement in the stablecoin market i want to get your views a little bit on this from the people up on the panel so cooch i'm going to come to you and i know you're uh, an advocate for xrp so well, give me a view what's your thoughts you know did you see it come in and, and where do you think we go with xrp now with an xrp stablecoin 
I didn't want to hear that, you know. I've been in XRP probably about, oh, I want to say at least six years, but uh, I didn't want to hear it. But we always heard on the back, you know, on the back end of it that Ripple could always create a fork to XRP, right? So we always heard, we always heard that. What if Ripple actually creates a dang fork to XRP? And especially with the SEC lawsuits, especially with all these, uh, you know, clouds overhanging XRP, with them talking about doing the, uh, you know, doing, well, not XRP, but Ripple, talking about going and going public, you know, and moving out of the country. So, you know, there's always been this cloud with XRP, even though we, we here for the technology, right? We here for the cross-border payments. But, you know, there's that cloud. So when they came out with the news about the stable coin, I was like, maybe this is the fork of XRP, right? But who knows? Who knows what they're building behind the doors, right? Who knows what they would what they will do for all the XRP holders? They may just add drop all the XRP holders. Who knows? You know, so you gotta kinda kinda take it with a grain of salt until something actually happens, so until these court cases are over, to these verdicts are rendered, until these uh, fines are paid, it's, we're still on the back burner with XRP. But until then, you know, it's uh, status quo. So, yeah, I, I didn't want to hear about the stable coin, though. Yeah, I definitely think it's an interesting narrative. And, yeah, I don't know if, you know, we've got obviously some big players in the space and we see some more recent ones coming out. And, yeah, it's an interesting play. I think it's an interesting angle that they've maybe come from and, and certainly the timing of it feels yeah, feels feels pretty out there really if I'm if I'm totally honest. I don't know if you've got a view, Mr. Mabry. Well, to tell you the truth, I hold exactly zero XRP. And I've just I've been kind of sketched out about XRP the entire time. And there's so many other options that when when my head goes sketch, I go the other way. Um, and there was just so many directions to go. And I've just been kind of watching the XRP, I, I don't know, show down the, 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 the entire thing, just kind of play around the market in front of me. And I, I'm, just, I'm just not digging it. So I don't want to talk bad, but I've got no good to say. It's just kind of kind of sketch to me the whole damn thing so and that's about all i gotta say about xrp man and stable coins i mean they're 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 useful but do you really need one on every single you know layer one or whatever i mean do you really i mean do you really come on yeah it just makes no sense to me so i just kind of steer clear of all that i stick with my main stable coins and i'm good to go man yeah, I think the uh, the interesting thing with XRP, and I've never hidden away from this, and look, I, I'm in a world where I, I think we'll see some real positive movement. However, and I've been really all open and transparent, if we don't get an outcome from a court case, and we and this goes for a lot of tokens, by the way, on coins, if we don't get one, you absolutely should not be staying in a project into this bull market in the hopes that it's going to do something. And, you know, there's going to be huge opportunity out there. And we'll talk a little bit about what's on people's minds and projects in a second. But there's going to be some massive opportunities out there that you get once every four years to really go and make, you know, potentially huge amounts of gains. There's always risks attached to it. And trust me, when you're deep into the bull market or you're up on a project where you've made a big gain, that one winner that everyone will get, the emotions take over, that kind of excitement, exhilaration of it. At the same time, that's when people can make bad mistakes. There was an example, someone reached out to me, they sent over a million dollars to a random Bitcoin wallet. Can I get it back? No, no. unfortunately, some things like that are, are done and dusted. So um, let me kind of just get a bit of a view on what's on people's shopping list. We've got a brilliant opportunity in the market. We've seen a pretty heavy correction. We see Solana, not only does the network go down, FTX dumping on us and you know giving it away for basically free to dump on the market again, which is kind of crazy. But what's on people's shopping list? What are people looking at? You know, what's kind of the week ahead uh, for you guys? So, Wadi, I'm going to come to you first. Um, you know, give us a view on kind of what you're looking at at the minute, what's on the mind, What you know, what are you kind of, what are you thinking about buying? Yeah, first before that, uh, today, tell me, bro, how did you get that beer, man? 
that's just what's even <laughs> weird what's even weirder is i literally went onto twitter on my computer and i was greeted with a giant picture of myself with i don't what is that one by the way what, what is that one called a shirt that is the dreamland bush I mean, I've got no words. I don't know about anyone else. Sorry, the, the Kirby Dreamland Bush, mother. Yeah. <laughs> Tell me what you're buying, Wadin. <laughs> Who gives a shit about the bush? <laughs> I'm only kidding. I'm only kidding. And, and look, it's a, probably a, it's a brilliant transition. I'm sure you're going to probably touch on it in a minute. But yeah, I will put it in the space just for everyone to have a go. It's there. <laughs> That's what I wanted to see. <laughs> Yeah, no, um, but all jokes aside, guys, um, you know what I've been thinking a little bit? There is one token that nobody is really mentioning a lot or even looking at a lot. And I don't know if you ever heard of um, Veracity, which is B-R-A. Uh, yeah, I did, a, I did a down thumb, but I actually meant an up thumb. Yeah, yeah, well, I've definitely seen that one, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so that's one that I am looking at. The other one is RSR. So when I spoke about RSR the first time, it was around the same price as Jasmine. Um, when I started talking about it, which was like 203, and it actually broke up to the one cent level. So BRA kind of did the same movement. I'm keeping my eye on those two because one, BRA actually has a partnership with Amazon AWS, which is Amazon Web Service. And I don't know if you know anything about Theta Network, but Theta Network did pretty good in the last bull run, which BRA is pretty similar to it, just a 2.0 version of it a little bit better and I'm expecting that token bro to really take off in this bull market and yeah I mean we're gonna have a whole chat about it but that's just my short version of it awesome man awesome Cooch let me come to you 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 dabble around in the whole airdrop narrative I'm interested to see what your you're looking at, have we got anything coming up? Obviously, airdrops are brilliant in terms of, you know, being able to farm it. There was a couple of uh, big airdrops that kind of went live uh, last week, but I know you're much more connected into this. So, you know, what are you looking at? What's on the shopping list? Any airdrops that we need to be aware of? Well, uh, I think most of the airdrops uh, has almost happened, except for, uh, I think, Camino and Chancer and uh, a couple of others. You know, Wormhole dropped this week. Uh, what was the other one? Uh, we had what two of them, two or three dropped this week. But no, for me, it's uh, going back to going back to the basics, right? Going back to projects that that you believe in that's still building in this bear market, and that's going to return the most for your dollar, right? So, uh, even though I like Jupiter, what Jupiter's doing, you know, I'm going to continue to be on my bag in Jupiter. I like the team over there, Jupe. You know, I, I kind of like what they're doing. And I like the team over there at Kulo. I like the team at Kulo. So, like uh, Avancis was saying, you know, they have a uh, they have a contract scanner as well. So, and they also came out with their wallet. They also have games on board. And they also have a swap. So, uh, Kulo's doing a lot of big things, man. Kulo doing a lot of big things. They got uh, Warren Sapp. He's a... Uh, Hall of Fame, an NFL player. Then they got a bunch of uh, top influencers like George and and uh, riding with uh, Crypto Journey. But yeah, I'm kind of excited for Kulo going forward. You know, I think they'll hit that hundred million market cap. So yeah, I'm a, when it comes to memes, it's probably going to be Kulo and Fox on Flap, right? Because Fox Fox just got dropped this week. So you know, I, I like Flap. So. With that being said, with all being said, I always reach back to Flair. So, you know, with Flair being under five cents, I think return on investment, you know, for your dollar, I think you'll get a hell of a reward by investing in Flair. So, 
Yeah, I'm continuing to build on Flare. I like what Flare is doing. Uh, the word is that all their products will be dropped sometime this year, you know, with FSS to where you can take your Bitcoin, your Dogecoin, and your XRP, wrap it, and, it, and then you can earn rewards in Flare, right? And once you earn those rewards in Flare, you can take it, rewrap it, and earn rewards back in Doge, XRP, and, uh, you know, and the circle continues, right? So that's kind of what I'm doing. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put all my eggs, well, not all of them, but most of my eggs this time around is going in Flare Network. So, yeah, I'm big on Flare for this year. But I do like the tokens like the Graph. I do like Anchor. I do like Casper. I do like those tokens, but until they move, I'm not going to just have idle money just sitting around this time around. So, yeah, I'm going to do things a little bit different this time around. Yeah, I think you make a really good point there. And, and I think a lot of people in this space believe that there is only a couple of things you can do. So buy a token and hold it or trade a token and see what happens. You know, leverage trading token. The reality is when you start really digging into, you know, what some protocols have to offer, where you can write, you know, where you can stake coins, yield farming. You know, there's a ton of liquidity. You can become a liquidity provider. You can really start to make your cryptocurrency assets uh, work for you. And, and I, I want to jump back to you, Matt, just really quickly. And there's a couple of things that we talk about quite regularly on on this space and equally kind of on the, on the YouTube channel, which is airdrops are an incredibly risky strategy. You're connecting your wallet and all that kind of thing. I guess the first question is, advantage AI, would they do anything with, uh, with, with airdrops? And then... Similar would be the staking narrative, liquidity farming. You know, is there something that Advanced AI would look at in terms of any of those kind of contract protocols and ultimately scanning those smart contracts? Um, yeah, so as it stands right now, we're not looking into airdrops or, um, you know, scanning on the liquidity side, which you just mentioned. But the thing is that we are doing is we're improving on the daily. So as we progress, as we keep building, you know, we're just in version 3.0. We've been out since June, uh, to give you an idea, with, uh, you know, our AI. But anything that just comes to our mind and that we are working on is, you know, just improving on every single front when it comes to finding these flaws. And, um, you know, the, the check that we do uh, with liquidity is obviously the lock. We, you know, look at the providers. Uh, we make sure that everything, you know, even like burn liquidity, for example, or legacy contracts, uh, that we have them all nailed down. Uh, but obviously, there's a lot of things that, you know, still need to be added because the, the space just continues to change. I mean, back in the day, you know, there was no locked liquidity. Then there was locked liquidity. Now people burn their liquidity, um, you know, with legacy contracts and so on. There's so many things and many factors that we uh, need to adapt to every single day. Uh, but for sure, you know, for the future, uh, we're always looking to expand on anything that we uh, can add to Advantage AI. Awesome, man. I, I appreciate that statement. And um, Michael Earn, I want to just come to you, and, and, and if I can, there's quite a few people in this space. And look, you talked a little bit about spot liquefiers, and it was something I heard you talk about, which really got me inquisitively looking into uh, projects. And I think it's such an important part of investing into anything, understanding the simple basics of uh, a contract. So I guess for everyone that's in here, and I, I really do think this is worthwhile understanding, uh, could you just give us a little bit of a rundown on exactly what spot liquefies is and then where earn is different to that i, I wonder if you could just give us a bit of a view on that yeah so uh pretty much know like i do spend most of my time on x on the earn account but my name is michael and i'm fully docs but uh yeah spot liquefy or also people know it as contract sell is a function in most tax tokens that they take tokens automatically and they accumulate them in the contract and then there's a function um, called swap liquefy where the tokens are accumulated to a certain threshold say like you know a hundred thousand or a million tokens but when it hits that threshold the function swap liquefy enables and it takes those tokens and it converts them into eth or bnb whatever um, base token you've selected um, for your contract so when you swap liquefy you're doing exactly what you're thinking you're selling those tokens that accumulate in your contract on the chart which is why some people might hear the phrase uh, the contract is selling or the dev is selling because um, this happens frequently. And this is how people collect, you know, quote unquote, marketing money because um, the tokens are accumulated based off of your taxes you're paying for transactions. And then it accumulates those tokens into the contract. And like I say, once it accumulates to a certain threshold, 
the tokens are sold on the charts automatically. And the crazy thing is that most people don't know they've even done this when they created their contracts because they probably just launched the project because they thought they can get rich quick. And then they renounce ownership. And that uh, threshold, that token threshold, is locked. And so it's kind of a death sentence in a way when you renounce ownership on these type of contracts because you can't change that token threshold. So that means the higher your market cap your project get, meaning the more extensive your tokens get, the bigger these dumps in your charts are going to be. And because the token threshold where the swap token 5 event takes place is public, you can see the number if you just go into the contract, you can do something that's pretty messed up. You can front run the contract sales because you see how many tokens have it accumulated in the contract because it's blockchain, right? You can just look at it. And then you can sell before the contract sells. And this is how some of these projects, unfortunately, get bled out because people learn how to front run the contract sales. Now, that's swap liquefy contract sell um, functionality. And some people that have this in their code, they're it's in their best interest not to renounce um, because of that. And the ones that do, they're only going to go to a certain point, um, to be honest. They're probably going to relaunch to a V2. But if they burn the liquidity and they have this in there for announced ownership, that's pretty much it. Um, so what uh, Haran is different is that we have no swap liquefied contract sell function in our code. It's not there. Haran is a, a simple but unique clean contract developed by my wife that only has a... Um, a tax on it that's reflective. Basically, every single transaction, it takes 2% of every transaction and reflects it back to all holders. It doesn't accumulate any tokens in the contract. It's just sending it back to all holders. And since one of the largest holders, well, the largest holder is the burn wallet, um, that's getting the most tokens on every single transaction. So it's just it's just simple. Uh, no contract sell, no swap liquefy. Um, a true reflection token where the tax money doesn't go back to the contract, which then gets swapped and back to one person. It gets just redistributed out to everyone in real time. Um, I think that's the best way to do it, but some people don't like that because it's, if you have a wallet, that's for your marketing, right? And then what people do is that they base their actions that they do for like marketing um, how much money that wallet accumulates. And that's how they calculate like biggest buys or paying influencers or calls, whatever. But when you do it like this way, there's no, there's no picture that says that if you do X, Y, Z, you're going to accumulate this amount of money in your wallet because there is no money going to one wallet. It's um, a true reflection token. So that's contract sell, swap liquefy, and that's how, how Earn is different, which is why we say it's 100% community driven because everyone that holds earns instead of just one person that holds, you know, earns back to one wallet. And just be, be aware of that, guys. When you go to a project and you see they've renounced ownership and burned the liquidity and they have contract sell, um, that project is only going to go so far. You know, they're going to have to figure out a way at some point, if it does get to a certain market cap, to pull that liquidity out somehow and do a V2, um, essentially at some point. That's just going to have to happen. Otherwise, people are going to, like, milk that thing for tens of thousands of dollars. And it's not hard to learn, you know, to find these functions and monitor the contract for token accumulation um, um, directly there. It's just, it's, it's, it's apparent. You can see it. So, anyway, hope that's not too technical. But, yeah, <laughs> that's, uh, that's how that all works. Perfect. I think people need to be aware of this. And we, we did a full space talking about contracts and taxes and ultimately what you need to know. And, and you know, these are the important things that when you're going to go invest and you will see much more of this. And the point you make there is as a token goes up in price, these cells become huge. And all of a sudden, what's the most important thing that people should uphold in this space is trust. And you can have trust is, you know, incredibly difficult to earn and very easy to break in this space. And I think you know, anything like that, you just have to be aware of now. Does it mean that you can't make some money? No. Does it mean that a project's bad? No, of course it doesn't. However, it is something you just need to be aware of. So, look, I think it's a brilliant explanation and, and look, really appreciate you giving us that. And again, for anyone who's, who's in here and uh, maybe it's your first time in these spaces, it's what we try and do. We try and make sure there's an element of education. People come here that are experts in their field or that have been here before. And, and again, when you move into this space, you can really just take the best of what people say and understand uh, what that's all about and, you know, really kind of maximize your potential into this uh, bull run, which I think is incredibly important and even more so when you kind of get into the bear market as well. So I would be going about an hour and 50 minutes. You've probably got about 50 minutes left. Go ahead, Michael. You, you have something to say? Something yeah, I was going to add to, I don't, I don't want to say that people that do this stuff with the contracts, I don't want to like come up, oh, they're, they're bad or they don't, they're, they are doing this on purpose. They might just be new and not know what they're doing. 
but it's just something to pay attention to. I mean, a lot of folks that are going to come into this next bull run are going to launch launch tokens and not understand this stuff. They're going to have that there and think nothing of it. So it's not saying if you guys are in a project or you're running a project that has this, it's not the end of the world. There are ways around it. You have this in there, and you're like, I'm like saying something that's freaking you out right now. Just just, just be aware of it, you know, um, and how it works. Because, the, you know, they say, like, the knowing is half the battle. <laughs> that's kind of cheesy. They just remember uh, G.I. Joe. But, yeah, just, uh, just learn about it <laughs> and how it all works. And it, sh- it should be okay. Because if you don't know, and then your project goes to, like, you know, tens of millions, and you're trying to figure out why is your chart nuking ever so often, you don't want to figure out then. You want to know now, you know, because people will FUD the hell out of you and bleed your contract out if you find out then instead of knowing now. So just heads up on that. Great point. And Matt, you got your hand up. Go ahead, Matt. Yeah, just, you know, briefly. First off, I think that was the best possible explanation about Swap Liquor Fire. And, you know, and thanks for sharing your knowledge. Um, you know, my view on that as well on that function is that, you know, the constant swapping and liquefying of tokens, you know, it, what it does, it leads, you know, to huge price fluctuations and volatility, you know, especially if the function is executed frequently or in large quantities, you know, and this is what basically this function offers and that's you know bad thing about it and the continuous addition of these tokens to the liquidity pool through the swap you know and to liquefy function we are, will also dilute even the value of these existing token held by investors so you know implementing swap liquefy and you know introduces an additional complexity i would say also to the code uh, but increasing the risk of coding errors and vulnerabilities you know altogether uh, and back act, you know bad actors will exploit these vulnerabilities to manipulate the function to their benefits either leading to security breaches or worst case scenario financial losses that's what happened to SafeMoon. They had actually, the, the, the Solidity version, there was actually, a, I guess, a leak, you could say it, where they didn't even notice that Swap Liquify was actually bleeding out tokens until they got to a certain market cap. Then they're like, why are there tens of thousands of dollars missing? And they noticed it going to an address, and that's why, that was the big reason why they relaunched to a V2, not because, they said it was because of the zeros, but it was because people put a report out that said, no, they're losing tens of thousands of dollars due to the Swap Liquify, then they have a blacklist function in their contract so they couldn't stop it so that was a big that was a big deal for them because they couldn't stop the um stop that person from doing that but yeah like you said vulnerabilities and it's it's a big thing just to know how it all works because if people don't know then they can deal with that especially if they go into the tens of millions hundreds of millions market cap and then they find out why is a wallet draining hundreds of thousands of dollars out of my project yeah, I tell you what would be would be really good, and I, I want to probably ask you to and get a view from a couple of other people up here as well. Is we've seen an incredibly big move on projects, protocols, websites, whatever you want to call it, where you can go and build your own token, you can launch your own meme coin. Great news! Here we'll build a contract for you, and you can launch it with no risk whatsoever. I, I wonder, and there'll be people down there that truly believe that hey, hold on a minute, this is easy building a project to just get a cool name, build a funky website, and bang, there we are, I'm a millionaire overnight. I just wondered, uh, the fact we have got Matt up here and we have got uh, Mike from Earn as well, I I just wondered if you could give your view. You can go first, definitely, but I'm curious to get people's views on it. I'm I'm curious to get your thoughts as developers in this space and uh, and equally, what, what... what are they about? Why would people use them? What are the risks attached to it? Well, I'll come to you first, and then Matt and Mike will come to you straight afterwards. So go ahead, buddy. No, so before I explain that, um, let me just explain spot liquefier. So you mix spot trading with some water, the liquid, and then you turn on your Wi-Fi, fire, spot liquefier. Okay, that's all, people. Now, going back to the serious question. <laughs> <laughs> I know I was just being a jerk. Um, no, um, no, you know that that's the thing to be like. Honestly speaking, you gotta be careful uh, where you go or who's building your contract, all of that. Because I've seen so many tokens out here, and, and you know the devs could probably have the best intention, literally speaking, but they went to the wrong person to create their contract. I've seen it happen a couple of times, and uh, I don't know, man. I mean, that is an issue where I feel that if you don't have at least basic knowledge of 
the functions of what does what, then you shouldn't create the token or you shouldn't go to a person unless they got a real solid reputation. Like, just recently, I, you know, I told Michael, I was like, hey, bro, I trust you a lot. I know that you know a lot in this space. This guy is really trying to do something good here. And if you could help help him out, that would be great. Because I'm pretty sure if I send him somewhere else, anybody just could take advantage of the situation and then mess up the whole project. And next thing you know, guess what? Everybody's actually blaming the the person that put the face, but not blaming the person that actually developed the contract. So it's a very sensitive um subject. Yeah, for sure, hundred percent. And and that opens up another question that I probably want to put to either Matt or Michael in terms of. So I was in a space yesterday. It was a brilliant space, by the way, really good. Uh, this project came on, talked about how they were doing uh, some big things with technical analysis, how they had some partnerships, just loads of good space. And I was thinking, oh, my God, man, this is a great project. Like, Let me have a look into it. I was kind of looking into it last night. I'm like, I really like what they're doing. The next thing, I kind of look at the chart this morning, and all of a sudden, we've had a backdoor exploit. Now, you have to be careful where you take this next sentence, but... Ultimately, backdoor exploit, drained $1.2 million you know, dollars out of the liquidity pool. All of a sudden, the project's done. I mean, absolutely done, dusted. So, uh, I don't know, Matt, if you want to just kind of give us your view. And, and look, what what is it? What, why do people, why do we see in this tar- this space backdoor hacks? Why do people get done? How is it possible? And and, and I don't know if, if, if there's anything advantage there I can support that. But, but just give us your view from a... Developer standpoint, you know, why do we see this in the space? Why do so many people lose out on stuff like this? And we're talking about backdoor hacks into smart contracts, is that right? Correct, yeah. Okay, yeah. Well, you know, first and foremost, um, you know, going back to your point as well, you know, to those platforms to simplify smart contract creation, you know, it, it might seem like a game changer and can fully understand that. It's like going to, you know, chat GPT and writing you a book in the style of, you know, JK Rowling, you know, and boom, it's there. But that doesn't make you a writer, right? You know, what I'm trying to say here is that, you know, there are serious drawbacks to considering. And, you know, at, when coming to those backdoors, you know, first off, a lot of people diving into these platforms might not even fully understand, you know, the ins and the outs of a smart contract, you know, the lack of understanding uh, in functions and so on. You know, this, this will definitely lead to mistakes and vulnerabilities in the code, you know, putting all these users that invest in this token at risk without them even realizing it. And the worst thing, you know, people also go to Fiverr, you know, specifically when you're talking about backdoors, um, to get smart contracts made, and eventually they find out that, ha- you know, it has a bad function in it, or they lose control over the contract and, you know, risk losing all what they've built and end up seeing a huge red scandal on their chart. And speaking of risks, you know, security is truly the problem here. Easy access to smart contract creation is honestly flooding the market with poorly written or insecure contracts. And once those contracts are out there, you know, they're set in stone. And people invest in almost anything these days. And if they got bugs or loopholes, you know, they could be exploited and causing major headaches and, you know, eventually losses for the, for the investor. Yeah, you make a really good point. And I think a lot of people don't realize this. Once you've put a contract on the blockchain, it is there. There is nothing you can do about it. You can't change it. You can't, you know, ultimately, if you've got it written into the contracts around taxes, all the rest of it, you can. But, you know, if you make a spelling error or a grammatical error on your name, it's there. It is done forever. We'll be posted on there. So, you know, trust me, and certainly Matt can attest this, and I know Michael kind of heard as well. If you truly are wanting to be a developer in this space, you want to kind of go and build your contract, you think that it's easy to launch a token, trust me, I haven't launched one by the way, but I'm in the process of working through some stuff, it's incredibly difficult, you have to build an incredible amount of trust, I know Michael, you're in a, you know, you you kind of have partnered up and and are working with with a project as well, and you know, so, so many people in this space are after your money, so many people will take it as well, and you know, there's a real risk attached to it. So please, for the love of God, don't use these smart contract builders because the reality is there is so much wrong with them. And, you know, ultimately, at the end of the day, you've got to think worst case scenario. You, what you don't want to be at is a big project that, you know, suddenly takes off and, you know, people do crazy things in this space. So, yeah, really important to, to reference that. Why do you go ahead, brother? Yeah, no, I mean, Matt or 
Michael, if you guys also want to extend on external calls, which is another thing that I noticed a lot of contract has, and that could be very harmful to any project because usually majority of the time when there's an external call, I noticed that those projects either A, miraculous, they get hacked, or B, um, it gets rough. S some way, somehow, that it gets rough. Um, yeah, uh, so I've been, you know, because I'm, I'm full-time crypto, so I do a lot of my stuff is research into, you know, other projects to learn from mistakes and understand what's out there. And then I have, I actually have the luxury that my, my wife, she's actually in the crowd right now, Nadina, she's a, she's actually more of a blockchain developer, like line by line code stuff. And so we go back and forth on how everything all works. And she's actually the one that wrote the code for, for earn and went through it by by line and didn't use a contract builder. And yeah, it's sad. A lot of people do do that because it's ease of use and they want to get it done quick and easy and just don't really mind if it might be dirty or not. Because it's funny, most of these things have their, their it's been audited and it's clean, but you don't know that. But I mean, like talking about, you know, uh, relevant situations this morning, I'm guys that are in this project, but, uh, Chart AI, uh, CX, suffered an exploit and they had to liquidate everything in the reserves um, to try to uh, combat it. I mean, if you look at the chart, it's a straight red down because they um, supposedly hired someone to do their staking contract and they left the back door that was uh, enabled to bleed out tens of thousands, <laughs> millions of dollars out of their code. Um, and so now they're having to relaunch to, uh, to fix that. Luckily, it looks like they had reserve tokens to bleed out their liquidity pool um, before that individual did, but if they wouldn't have, that would have been a, an in-game situation, if you know what I mean. Um, other projects, you look at that Gallison money. I mean, a couple years ago, they suffered an exploit where someone was able to do a flash loan attack because, for whatever reason, they thought it was an okay idea to create a liquidity pool between their main token and another one that has a mint function and so <laughs> they just did a flash loan on the token that a mint function and bled out the liquidity pool taking about like eight or ten million dollars out of the protocol some pretty nasty stuff you know and you know knowing things like that don't attach your token to a mintable token and the liquidity or if someone's going to write a contract for your project if you're going to you know like you said get a fiber person I'm like, oh my God, <laughs> if you, you run a project that goes into the hundreds of millions and someone that you don't even know created it, what, what are you doing, you know? And so, uh, yeah, um, these the call functions and uh, people can put nasty stuff in things, especially if they're a little more complicated with uh, contract cell function or other functions and I'm like blacklist and whitelist and max wallet and um, all this stuff. I mean, it's, you gotta be really careful. And anyone out there that's looking to launch a project if you have someone write it for you and you don't know who that person is, there's like no real accountability. You have to be real careful because your face is on this. And if you lose your um, investors, your community, millions of dollars, who do you think they're going to go after? You know, so you got to be real careful of this stuff because this is, this is, this is, like they say, this is big boy money. You know, you start playing with it. You don't know where your project can go to. Hell, it can go to hundreds of millions of dollars. And then it gets to that point and then someone, you know, cuts it in half, takes that money out you're accountable for it. So it's a dangerous game. And, you know, if you're going to launch something, <clears throat> I would highly suggest to get audits if it's complex or actually have someone write it for you that there is accountability um, for their actions that they put something in your contract. Because, you know, you don't want to be the person who are pointing fingers at and you saying, I don't know why this happened. Yeah, 100%. 100%. And it's such an important part. And you know, once it's in, it's in. And, and I guess from an in investor standpoint, these are some of the questions that you should absolutely be holding developers to account. Who wrote the contract? Well, I, I don't know. <laughs> See ya. I'm definitely not inviting, in, I'm definitely not invested into that. Um, so yeah, look, look, really, some really good insights. And again, these are what these spaces uh, are all about. So we've been live about an hour and a half. Um, I'm going to kind of jump up and get out of here. It's nearly midnight here in the UK. But look, I kind of want to just run around the people upon the, the panel and just get a bit of a view, any kind of last words and last statements. So Matt, I'm going to come to you first. 
Uh, firstly, I would just say I really appreciate you coming into the space and sharing your wisdom and your expertise in terms of what you and both Advantage AI are doing. So, look, I really, really appreciate it. And, uh, yeah, any final views? Um, yeah, uh, there's just one thing I wanted to add to what uh, Ern has said, and uh, it's just, you know, regarding blacklisting, and then I'll just go to the uh, end where if that's all right. Um, so blacklisting, you know, it's one of those calls that is a heaven or hell situation. You know, it's a, such a powerful function because it enables, you know, the developer to block an investor from selling or buying the token altogether on that wallet. Now, Advantage Token also has that blacklist function. And, you know, about two months ago, I believe, you know, two of our investors actually got hacked. Uh, and we had, you know, just enough time to blacklist those wallets and not get those wallets stolen. So at the end, you know, one, you need to look at those functions and determine whether a developer is also trustworthy or not and you know this goes for anyone that is out there you know don't create your contract on fiverr but all you know for good and sake uh understand these functions know what they do and make sure that whenever you invest into something research it you know scan it using the multiple different security platforms out there and make sure that you know what you're getting into if you want to become a developer by all means go for it but at least study what you need to know about it um, you know learn the code and uh, get to know uh, what it actually does so you don't hurt yourself or all the investors investing into your token um and yeah i want to close down you know thank you uh, so much for having me here it was a blast to uh, earn you know waddy two bit and uh, michael thank you so much it was a lot of fun learned a lot of things here too and uh, you know we'd love to come back sometime 100 percent. and yeah look i mean it's fantastic to have the great thing that we do on these spaces we seem to have people from all parts of the cryptocurrency ecosystem and look to get you and to share your knowledge and, and i know for some people in the uh, in the space right now that's been incredibly insightful and incredibly useful in terms of both what you and Ern have talked about. So, yeah, massive uh, massive thank you to you. And Ern, I'll come over to you, Michael. Just any kind of final statements, any kind of final things for the uh, for the space. Yeah, I just add. You know, like I said, I was watching our chatting about someone to help out with uh, some contract uh, questions. Um, spend time, guys, um, making those connections and developing relationships in the space uh, with legitimate people. You got to put in the work because if you try to shortcut things and get something done, it's probably not going to end up well at all. So it's always good to take time and build connections with people in the space that may have already made these mistakes and they can help out um, to help you avoid that stuff. It's always really cool. Actually, speaking of, I'm actually going to, I've been, I've heard you talk several times, uh, Matt in like so many spaces. I'm going to send you a DM or something like that because it'd be cool to check out that program, maybe even possibly do a collab at some point. Um, it's really cool to connect with actually, you know, builders in the space. A lot of people are just hype moon people. Um, it's actually cool to see people are actually bringing adoption and figuring out ways to not have people lose a hell of a lot of money. But yeah, just keep connection, make good connections, guys. And uh, yeah, enjoy the bull run. I think we're in one. And uh, DCA, we said, <laughs> everyone says it all the time, just DCA, don't over invest and don't, don't freak out when it's a 50% retracement and sell everything and then it goes up 100% the next, like, <laughs> right after you sold. You know, that's a classic thing that happens all the time. It is exactly that, isn't it? It's a statement. Whenever I buy a token, it goes down. Whenever I sell, it goes up. You know, it's never a true word even said. All that means is you're buying and you're selling at no. the wrong point. Go ahead, buddy. No, uh, I was going to say to me, you know, it's funny because I think absolutely everyone goes for that, bro. Like, once upon a time, bro, I thought you, the universe was conspiring against me, bro. Like, literally, every time I would buy, the damn token would start going down. And right when I'm like, okay, you know what? Let me just cover my losses. Boom, 50% up. I'm like, you know what? That's it. I'm done with crypto. And then a week later, I'm at it again. So here I am. Yeah, everyone definitely goes through that. The other one that people go through is, I just bought this on an exchange. I can't believe I just bought it on Binance. Binance definitely rubbed me on this. They sold all their tokens before. It is absolutely part of the emotion that comes with it. And, and equally, you know, when you're starting to stare down a, a, a bull run or you're starting to look at getting into any kind of project, this is what we talk about. Surround yourself with great people. I talk a lot about community, being loads of communities, being great, like-minded people, getting spaces, hear what people have to say, listen to people that have been there and done it before because ultimately what is on your mind, everyone's been through it, everyone's kind of had a narrative down it. And, and again, that's why I said right at the very start of the space, I love this Friday night space. It's so open to a lot of things. It's not just a jump in and show me the latest shit going that's going to be a thousand X pump you know it's not about that it's just about education it's about understanding it's about how you just reset emotions as you go into it so look i, I really appreciate you guys and, and look there's been loads of stuff being talked about tonight that 
um, you know, I'm, I'm definitely sure people have a lot to think about. Um, Coochie Boy, anything from you, brother? Any kind of final statements? As always, I really appreciate you being up here with me every Friday night. But anything for the community? I really enjoyed the space. I really enjoyed the space. Uh, you know, it's still the wild, wild west, right? Crypto, but this, I still have a question for the, uh, you know, for the devs. Is there a specific line that we need to look at when looking at contracts? I know we're like cash statements and balance statements. If you say, hey, look at line such and such, you'll see a profit and loss. Is there a specific line that we can look at to shortcut reading the, all the code? Say, like, look at line 25. Would that be like a red flag or something like that? Is there a specific line that we can shortcut and look at? So the swap function or swap threshold um, it doesn't have a specific line. I don't. I don't think. But look up those keywords: uh, threshold, um, swap token amounts, um, contract sell, swap liquefy. Those are keywords that you're probably going to see um, in the read code section. Um, but yeah, not a specific number. I don't think because you can add a lot of functions to a contract, but. Look for those particular keywords, um, you know, threshold amount, swap liquefy, contract sell. Um, it, you know, if they have a tax and they're not collecting the native token only in their wallet, then they have, then they're collecting, uh, there's a swap liquefy. You can just ask the question in the, in the, uh, the TG, like, are you guys collecting ETH for your marketing? If they say yes, then 100% there's a swap liquefy <laughs> function in that contract. Because if this token, they're collecting ETH. That's the only way they're getting it. It's, it's some sort of liquefy function in that contract. But yeah, just, just look for that and you should be able to see it on um, what they're what's doing. But um, I don't think there's a specific line per se to it in, in each in each contract code. I appreciate that information. I think that's a good thing. And equally, just, uh, and we did a full space. And you know what? It probably feels like something that would be great to get Matt, you back on here. Likewise, Mike, and really talk about what is it you need to look at in contracts? How do you kind of read it? The great thing, and, and I know, Matt, you've come off mute, so I'll, I'm going to hand this over to you, but the great thing is you can also use certain things that I believe show some of this. So go ahead, Matt. Yeah, you know, I just wanted to add, Gucci, um, you know, I'm, I'm probably going to sound biased here, and this is not, you know, towards Advantage CI or anything, but I want to make it easy for you. Um, so if you go to Advantage CI and Access Pro, it will show you all these bad functions, you know, that Ern was talking about, plus also the explanation of each of these bad functions and what they do and why, you know, you should be looking out for those because there's a lot, you know, out there. Uh, there's a lot of different functions, and they have, you know, different uh, kind of outcomes, whether good or bad. And, you know, it also comes down to some of these functions having trust in the developer. So not every function that is out there that can be either bad or good, you know, it, there can be a, a little bit of a middle ground in that department, I would say. Um, but if you want to learn more about that, I would definitely, uh, you know, advise you to go and check out Advantage CI because we explain every single thing uh, for you to learn about all these different functions as well. Awesome. Yeah, I think it's definitely a, it's a huge thing people don't look into. This whole narrative of, I'm just going to buy... Ask Cracky knew that's going to be the next 1000x and people just chuck some money and it's crazy. I've never known people throw money away quicker in this game. And as you kind of mature into this space, it is all about how do I, how do I make sure that I've got a better advantage than the person down the road? I talk about this and it's fact. The new people that are going to come into this space at the hype of this bull run are the people that are our exit liquidity. It's just the circle of life in this cryptocurrency space. Why? Because you guys have put the work in. You guys have connected with people that have the right mindset. You guys have got to understand some projects and equally some utilities you can use to make sure that your decisions are better, quicker, faster, more educated than the people that are just coming in. They're just going to go through a thousand dollars at a project and hope it sticks. And I think it's really, really important. Um, Michael, any kind of last words from you? Uh, yeah, I just want to say uh, I'm grateful to be in this space more than any other one I've been on because, you know, and, and it's it's kind of like this space was almost I know it wasn't but it's kind of like this space was created and everybody started talking about all the reasons why I'm creating the crypto token and launchpad that I'm creating to stop all of this everything will be you know under scrutiny before and after launch and not to shill but like that it, it just it's so closely related to what I've been doing for the past year to get this token and this contract and this launch pad correct before we launch kind of kind of a Hoskinson type wait and get it correct first but 
I mean, I'm grateful to be here. DCA into the market. Start now. Don't stop until you want to. Um, enjoy everything and pay attention to what you're doing. Slowly, pay attention. You'll, you'll do better in the long run. That's about it. Thanks for letting me, you know, hang out and talk shit. Awesome, man. Like, I always, always appreciate you. And, uh, and yeah, I, uh, I appreciate you being in this space for sure. Uh, last but not least, Waddy, uh, what's your final, final thoughts? And equally, just let everyone know where they can kind of find you and where they can kind of catch up with you on, uh, on YouTube. Yeah, um, well, to me, I appreciate you allowing me um, to co-host this space with you. Always great conversation. Uh, Matt, great sharing the stage with you again. Earn Michael, and Michael Membry, and Coochie Boy. Likewise, man, it's always fun. As you guys know, I'm Wadi the Crypto Hunter. You guys can catch me here on X or YouTube. I usually stream on Monday, 7 p.m. EST, Wednesday, 7 p.m. EST, Thursday, 7 p.m. EST, and then Fridays, I'm over here being a pain in the ass with King Chopper himself today. But other than that, I'm using me in plenty of spaces because Okay, this is going to make me sound real bad, but I do get around, people. That's all. And he gets around quick as well on that wheelchair. So shout out to you, Waddy. Look, I appreciate you always co-hosting with me as well. And, and look, we've really kind of moved this space, I think, into a different narrative. And look, I really appreciate everyone that's tuning in with us. And, and, and really, it is an exciting time to be in this market. It's an exciting time to see what's come in and equally it's an exciting time to surround you by people that genuinely have the best interests at heart i've talked a lot about this on my youtube channel that this is about everyone succeed remember it's about winning the game it's about taking our little piece of the puzzle and ensuring that we take the best opportunities we have so i just want to extend a massive thank you once again to matt appreciate you coming in talking about advanced air 100 highly recommend you guys go and check it out you have got nothing to lose and everything to gain and likewise michael from earn 100% get involved in that talk. You guys just talk so candidly and so openly about kind of some of your experiences and how you kind of go about things. And and again, I just highly recommend following the people up on the panel as with Cooch, Michael Mabry and Waddy. I appreciate you all. And again, thank you so much for everybody that's tuning in this space. We're here every Friday. If you have anything that's on your mind, please send it a DM. My DMs are always open to anyone. I'd love to kind of talk about all these things, making sure you absolutely have the best tool set to go and make the most amount of what you can uh, in this bull market if anyone is interested you can catch me over on youtube six days a week i put content out nearly every single day i take saturdays off which is new for me uh, but i do, do take saturdays off so come and hang out with us uh, we'll be back on youtube tomorrow night 4 p.m eastern uh, for all the latest and greatest in cryptocurrency but once again thank you so much everybody for tuning in really really appreciate you guys hopefully we'll see you all again next friday cheers everyone